The finale to Gen V is here and it came out swinging. This setting up the boys season 4 so well. And if you didn't know, season 2 of Gen V has been confirmed so this cliffhanger of an ending will not stay a cliffhanger. As I'm running this, Variety just released that the boys season 4 takes place a few days after the season finale of Gen V. Perhaps we'll get some answers in season 4 but most likely I do not believe we will see these characters until Gen V season 2. Maybe a mention of them but I'm not 100% sure. Anyway, welcome back to Fantasy Theory. We are breaking down Gen V season 1 episode 8, the finale titled Guardians of Godolkin. So if you don't remember in an earlier episode, they called Andre and Marie the Guardians of, of Godolkin after Luke's suicide. This being a play of Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy. If you watch the episode, you'll know things get switched up big time by the end of the episode, but we'll leave it at that for now. Anyway, let's just jump right into it. We start the episode with a shot of Dean Shetty dead on the floor. Without Kate's meds, everyone's thoughts and voices are so much louder in her head. We hear Sam screaming in his head saying she butchered us, Emma freaking out that she killed Shetty, Marie wondering why no one is helping her, and Jordan thinking Kate is insane. I personally still think that this scene between Kate and Shetty was a setup. Something is just not adding up for me. As I said in the last breakdown, Kate was literally lying her head in Shetty's lap, and now she forced Shetty to commit suicide. I'm not buying it. I do not think this will be the last of Shetty, but we'll see. So Kate thinks what she's doing is for the betterment of everyone and she is finally being a hero. Sam comments saying he wants to be a hero too. While the other three are skeptical, we know from last episode Sam is very easily influenced by the people around him. For example, Rufus at the town hall meeting in the last week's episode. Kate tells her plan to the group which is to free everyone in the woods. Sam wants to go with her claiming it's his turn to save Emma. When Jordan switches to their female persona, they realize they cannot take on Sam alone. I did think it was possible that this was going to happen but we see a little head shake from Marie giving a signal to Jordan to not intervene so Kate and Sam end up leaving Shetty's house and the others there. The three are now trying to figure out what is best to do. Marie suggests they try to stop Kate and Sam themselves rather than getting campus security involved as Jordan suggested. Interesting to note they all have different ideas of how to stop Kate and Sam. Emma caring deeply for Sam and does not want to do anything that could possibly get him caught or hurt him. Marie does not trust anyone in Vaught or Godolkin and Jordan immediately wanted to call campus security to avoid chaos. We jump to Andre in Vaught Tower with his dad Polarity. It makes sense that they went to Vaught Tower and not a regular hospital. I'm sure a regular hospital would not have the capability of treating the soup. Andre gets the horrible news that the more his dad uses his powers, it causes irreversible brain damage as represented in the scans of his brain. The doctor asks Andre if he's experienced any lightheadedness, tics, specifically in the pinky finger, and other things, while Andre kind of pushes it off to the side, saying doesn't everyone just get lightheaded? Perhaps this is foreshadowing what could happen to Andre in the future if he continues to use his powers. I wonder if Vaught is aware of Polarity's health declining, and is this affecting any other soups? As we see in Kate, her blown blood vessels in her eyes, and Sam claiming he has a messed up brain because of the serum. It's convenient that right as the doctor asks Andre, if there's any of these symptoms, he starts to twitch in his face rather than his pinky. Could be early signs that Andre's health is declining also. When Polarity wakes up, he tells Andre to call Vaught to have them resize the suit to fit Andre. Polarity apologizes to Andre about everything, including knowing about the woods and how he did nothing to stop it all. He only wanted to do what would protect Andre from it. As Andre tries to tell his dad that their powers are killing them, his dad interrupts Andre to say it's his time now and to listen to whatever Vaught tells him to do. It makes me think, is Polarity already aware of the powers ultimately going to be the thing that kills him? Or is he completely unaware? He cuts him off almost like he doesn't want to hear it again. And if he does know, and he is pushing it on his son Andre, how could he want to protect his son, yet kill him at the same time? We are now back at Godolkin and we see Ashley having a meeting with some of the board members discussing sending some straight to the Seven due to the school having a lot of negative press. As we know, there are four available spots, leaving only Homelander, The Deep, and A-Train. They just decide to go in the order of the rankings and we know who was first from previous episodes, Andre Anderson. We see his resume and I'm going to point out some things that I thought were interesting about it. His powers are listed as magnetic telepathy. His GPA is a 3.3 which Ashley scoffs at. His IQ is 120 which is surprising to her. It says he is the son of Layla Anderson which I believe Polarity says was no longer with us. He has a special talent of him speaking in a British accent which we haven't seen but he could be a play in real life as the actor who plays Andre was raised in England. His magnetic the genetic weight limit is 12 tons and some of the risks may be that he was friends with Golden Boy, has a rocky relationship with his father, and is notorious for missing important events. As we know this is a reference to an earlier episode where he misses an interview to investigate Luke's death and bails out on the charity event for Brink's death. Over to the woods we see Kate talking to one of the guards who she refers to as Greg but is really Bob as he corrects her. This continues the mix up of the two guards in an earlier episode where Shetty refers to Greg as Bob. As we know Greg is the guard in episode 4 that Sam brutally kills and steals his jumpsuit to escape with Emma. And now we see Sam in episode 8 kill Bob by literally ripping his eyes out of the sockets. 
I do wonder if Greg and Bob were friends. Kate gets a guard to unlock all the cells in the woods by using her powers, so obviously there's a lot of parallels to X-Men here. We see a really ominous scene of a girl in the shadows with glowing eyes about to be free from her cell, as well as a soup that teleports like Nightcrawler. We'll get to other powers from other soups later on, but those are the ones I want to point out right now. As we also see a soup named Banshee, and they ask how long he's been locked up for when he responds, is Gangnam Style still a thing? Gangnam Style was a song, a viral song, produced in 2012. This meaning just a single soup has been locked up for over a decade. I wonder what made Chetty choose these soups that she chose. Was it truly just at random, or did certain powers stick out to her? Now that they've released all the soups in the woods, I wonder if any of them got into contact with any of the bodily fluids from Andy, the previous soup who was infected by the virus. If so, this could be the way that Shetty gets what she wants and the virus spreads to every soup on campus. Hopefully that's not the case though, but we'll see. Anyway, as Kate starts to lead the pack of soups to campus, Sam passes his open cell, looking into his cell and he sees Luke. Which he clearly has made up in his head, but we see in this episode how Luke has become Sam's inner conscience. I don't know about you guys, but one of my favorite things in a show or movies is when a present character speaks to their dead loved ones, or any dead character really. I don't know, it just always gives me the chills. Anyway, we see Luke be the angel on Sam's shoulders while Kate being the devil in real life. We will see Sam eventually make the choice of whose side he will follow. Sadly, as the episode goes on, we see Sam making the inhumane choices which will lead him down the path with Kate to kill innocent lives of non-soups and to show who is superior. This is a real heel turn for Kate and Sam, but mostly right now for Kate. In the earlier episodes, we see Kate show great levels of empathy towards everyone, while now she is just rationalizing every violent act she is going to commit towards non-soups. That in her brain is for the greater good. Kate rallies up all the soups and gives a speech about taking their power back and how they are superior ones and they will always be. The soups cheer while Sam is still conflicted fighting with his conscious, which is Luke. The escape suits are now free and we see Banshee speak to Rufus and spare him because he is a soup, but immediately after he sees a teacher who is not a soup and proceeds to melt her face off with his hand. I guess this is why he was sweating when we first met him. He must always be hot. This sparks utter chaos throughout the campus. The other escape suits now attacking non-soups and even soups fighting on another. Amongst the chaos, we see social media advisor Jeff, who is undercover for Vaught. Free of his light cast from earlier episodes, he runs into one of the escaped soups. He uses what we see as a sound device, a weapon used against soups. It has high frequency that it will hurt their eardrums badly enough to control them to stop them from whatever they are doing. We've seen this from other guards in earlier episodes of this show. He then uses some type of silver chip and places it in the soup's mouth, presses a button, and blows her head off. He then contacts Ashley saying that the cover is blown and believes the soups escape the woods. Before he can escape, Kate finds him and uses her powers to make him live stream his suicide. She makes him do the exact same thing he did to the soup previously. He put the chip in his mouth and makes his head explode. I want to note that there was a little bit of hesitation from him while doing it. Perhaps she is getting weaker the more she uses her powers, I'm not sure, but I did notice that. Sam interrupts Adam's class before trying to choke him out. Emma stops him, however we get this really emotional scene with Sam and Emma, almost like a breakup. Sam is visibly angry and upset about his time in the woods, as Emma's problems were if she should star in a reality TV show, as he says. This being a callback to episode 3 when she was offered her own reality show at Brink's charity event. Sam says to Emma she is not a hero and leaves. A weird heel turn considering a few episodes ago, he said he would make her remember she is a hero. I fully believe he is good, but all that propaganda from earlier episodes is making him do these bad things. As he leaves, Emma starts to cry and we see her powers in effect when she starts to shrink. She looks surprised that this happened, so this must be a new part of her power? Maybe not crying, but perhaps the emotional attachment aspect of it makes her shrink. Sam confronts Kate and asks if what they are doing is right. While Luke is talking to him saying he knows Sam does not want to go down this path and he is killing innocent people. And what about Emma? What would she think? And he knows he's better than this. Sam goes back and forth with Kate and Luke in his head until he finally decides what is holding him back from following Kate blindly is that he still has a heart. He tells Kate to make him feel nothing. Luke is very disappointed and from this point on we don't see Luke anymore and he vanishes from Sam's sight. And Kate uses her powers to rid him of emotions. As he says, this feels good. As we predicted, this would eventually be used. We get a code red that locks everyone in and out of the buildings, the dorm rooms, and everything. We get this sonic screeching noise, again projected all over the loudspeakers. And luckily for the soups, there is a soup from the woods that has Banshee powers, the X-Men with, with the sonic scream, and takes out all the loudspeakers projecting that noise. So now Ashley calls upon the cameo we were all hoping for, Homelander. 
At least I was hoping for Homelander. One of the few cameos in this episode, might I add. They also let Adam, who was almost choked out a few scenes ago in the room because he threatens to tell everyone what him and Ashley did at the cancer fundraiser. As we know, they hooked up at the dawn of the 7 premiere, so they may be frequent lovers at this point. Who knows? They extend offers to a few soups to stop the rogue soups, including Marie. They say if they stop them, it's an automatic entry into the 7. They even sweeten the deal to Marie by promising a meeting with her sister, Annabeth. Ultimately, Marie will not take this deal but it is interesting to see she has an opportunity to be the first black woman in the seven but does not take it as Newman said that's where the real power is the Wi-Fi goes out causing a huge panic with the influencers and a helicopter comes to rescue Ashley and the board members until Kate uses her powers on a conveniently placed soup that flies to fly through the helicopter before the helicopter crashes Andre uses his powers for good and stops it from crash landing but we do see him weakened after doing this perhaps early signs of his brain starting to damage as he uses his powers. Marie picks him up saying they are the guardians of Godolkin, as we know that won't last much longer. Kate makes Maverick fight Marie and obviously it's hard to fight the invisible guy, but Marie remembers her powers and senses his heartbeat and sees where he is. I don't know if this was a visual for us to see his bloodstream or if she actually sees his veins and bloodstream and knows where he is. She knocks him out winning the fight and finally get to see him not invisible and well a little too much of him because he's not wearing any clothes as we know that's how he stays invisible. Visible. Jordan saves the board members and tells them to get into the grounded helicopter while Andre fights Sam. Now Sam was pretty much winning this whole time, but Andre was going toe to toe with him and holding his own in the fight, so maybe Andre is that powerful or close to it. Andre eventually wins by shocking him, and they are both out for the count. Of noting, we see Andre's hand, particularly his pinky, twitch as he uses his powers to get the shock stick. That is definitely a sign that his powers are hurting him, like the doctor said. Maybe he's stronger than his dad because it's starting to affect him earlier on than how it affected his dad. I'm not sure. Marie uses her powers to summon all the blood in the area to use as a weapon and shoots it into the back of the soup going after the helicopter. Incredible scene showing how powerful Marie is. As Marie does this, she sees Kate walking over to Jordan with her arm extended to try and control Jordan and in a panic, Marie blows her arm off, clean off from the elbow down. Similar to how she did to Rufus earlier on in the show. And we get the big Homelander cameo we were waiting for. And everyone there stops what they're doing because, well, it's Homelander. They know to stop when he's there. Marie thinks that she is there to help Jordan, Marie, and Andre. But he does his signature finger shake. But as we know, this does not go well. And he tells everyone to stand back and laser eyes Marie and the screen goes black. There's a broadcast of Cameron Coleman calling the Godolkin 4 massacre and painting Emma, Marie, Andre and Jordan as the bad guys in the situation. We see the new guardians of the Godolkin, Sam and Kate. Now we see a happy Homelander. Could be because the two white kids are the heroes instead of the diverse group of kids. We don't know, but I'm sure Homelander has some underlying plan he's happy about. Now, I want to note, is Marie that powerful that she took a full-on blast from Homelander? Or was she, he holding back for some reason? Perhaps because Victoria Newman is a benefactor for Marie? Anyway, we see Marie wake up in a room with no doors but a hatch on the ceiling. And we see this all in a white room with Jordan, Marie, Emma, and Andre. Jordan asks, where are we? And the episode ends. But not as we think because we get the goat in the at the credit scene. As we know by his boots, it's Billy Butcher. He walks around the woods with complete darkness and says his signature catchphrase that I will not repeat. And then it officially ends, setting up the boys season four. Well, that was an incredible finale. So much happened. A lot of questions raised, but as I said earlier, season two was confirmed as well as the boys season 4 taking place only a few days after the finale of Gen V. So a lot of our questions should be answered when the new season comes out, but what did you guys think of the episode? What questions do you have? Is Shetty dead? Was Mallory talking to Butcher on the phone in the previous episode? What is Homelander smiling about? Where are Marie, Andre, Emma, and Jordan? So many questions, but I absolutely love this finale, and it only got me more excited to see the boys season 4, as well as Gen V season 2. This has been Nick from Fantasy Theory. Please like and subscribe. I'll see you all on the next one. Have an incredible day.